here. You probably sleep by now. Um, I wrote a story I sent it to you, but there's like two sentences that um, I want two different sentences where I want two words switched around. Like I've been playing around with it. And now I want to put it back to how I had it. But I, and so, I mean, it's probably not that noticeable. <clears throat> and um, the other thing was, I, sp I spelled the name of a town in California wrong, but I, I knew it. And so I fixed it, but I guess I didn't save it. I, I don't know. But I had been saving all along. San Luis, Luis, San Luis Obispo. Luis, L-U-I-S. At first I spelled it L-O-U-I-S, but then I was like, uh, it can't be that. It's not, it's not going to be spelled that way. <sighs> So, um, okay, yeah, 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 it's Carolyn related. I was just reflecting on a couple of things, and just now was like, I am not gonna be spoiled princess anymore, but my spoiled princess status was always kind of half assed and like random. Uh, but it was there, undeniable. And right now, I feel liberated, like clean, cleansed. Um, even though back when it was happening, I thought, well, this is as much fun for her as it is for me, which she did indicate. You know, it wasn't just like I was like squeezing things out of her, but. Um, I don't know. So I'm just gonna have to get used to not thinking more shopping and eating. Like I don't have to go to fine dining. She's more excited about going to the best of the best restaurants, and I don't care that much about that at all. Um, but when I want something, uh, you know, I like I like that once or twice a year she takes me shopping, even though like a lot of it. <laughs> turns out to be uh, not not quite right for me but I mean nothing's worse than when she shops for me and I'm not there that's the very worst she never gets it right uh, raisin colored things uh, when she I've told her a hundred million times I don't like raisin that's a narcissistic quality to not take in like to not like just be totally oblivious like, I hate raisin-colored clothing, and then, like, every year I get raisin-colored socks, um, one or two raisin-colored shirts, remember the puffy raisin-colored vest for, for uh, PSE, uh, yeah. So, that was on my mind. Like, will it hit hard at some point? Why well, I feel sad and deprived? And I was thinking about you, and you don't, you haven't had like a sugar mama in your life and you're into fashion and you're not going to work. <laughs> like, and I haven't always been to thrift stores. Like, it's not like I always had her to buy me shit. Like, I, you know, I, I'm a thrift store person too. So, um, but yeah, um, let's go back to how I always generally lived and moving back to New York this stuff intensified because I was right here and um anyway <sighs> it does feel like some kind of like I, I feel like oh am I gonna miss that okay anyway erase that or right, moving on um I thought about uh two things very related one am I committing some kind of sin uh, is she that bad? Is she worth like too much cut off? Like, 
like over the years, over the years, I've done terrible things, unforgivable things. Sarah's Jen said the um, pussy touching in front of me was unforgivable, and uh, you know, yes, some said. But since I've been in New York, yes, she's crossed my boundaries and been a bitch. It's mostly regarding her girlfriend. And, um, but relatively harmless. She's not in my business. She's not nosy because she's so self absorbed. Um, she doesn't even see Poppy that much, even though she knows her. Anyway, but I, um, she's not a great person. But am I, am I overdoing it? Even if I never officially cut her off, like I just slip away to Oregon and have some, some little meeting with her of some sort before we go. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Like some kind of little something that's like, oh yeah, we're, we're not broken up, but but we really are. I, I just get confused, but like, it is what I'm doing right now, right now, this past month, it's more than a month now, uh, to extreme. But then like, she's being rather extreme by not pursuing me or asking, just merely asking, checking in. How are you? I'm sad that you're upset with me. Please explain. You know anything, anything. She's not doing it. So I keep flip flopping like she's doing that, but I am being too extreme. Am I being too extreme? Um, even my therapist was like, You don't have to have like this total complete severing. I was like, I kind of want to, but am I just in a dream bubble right now? Just a strange, I kind of feel like I'm dreaming. I don't, I don't know. Oh, I ran out of lithium a few days ago and only got some today. My brain has been like, so I'm, I, I feel like it's still not quite right. Um, um, um but, uh, just right now. Okay, I read on the internet stories of people that they call it going no contact. You go no contact with uh, your abuser, your narcissistic person or whatever, your personality disordered partner or relative or friend. And the stories are like really, uh, highly abusive. Very abusive, physically abusive, um, extremely abusive. Uh, people are like are fearing for their lives and can't get away. And you know, so I'm saying she doesn't really bother me. But then I think, like, fuck you, like, fuck you. My father did damage, she did damage. I have rage. My, my therapist said I have rage. Um, I'm sorry to be musing on this like, incoherently. Here's the thing. I want to cut her off. That's what I feel like doing. One. Two. Is that just um, me being vindictive? Even though I know she's done terrible, horrible things for like years and years and years. But recently, her bad behavior is not really warranting a cutoff. Like, if you just looked at it right now, it's like, what? It's, it's really the whole picture. So, I don't remember if that was two or three. I think that was two. So, is it worth, should I cut her off? I want to cut her off. Should I cut her off based on her whole history with me? Or am I cutting her off based on recent history, which is bad, but not in unforgivable. And for, um, 
Is she going to notice? I don't know. Who is she? What is she? She's the per we used to hang out, laugh, shop, eat. And I, I keep having flashes of like moments of that, like that, that kind of stuff. And I'm, it seems like someone who died, like, oh yeah, we used to, we used to do that, yeah. But without the sorrow and sadness, and my therapist thinks that sorrow and sadness is going to hit eventually. And that's why we should go slow instead of sudden, like, you know, I want you out of my life. And then had to deal with the fallout of that. Um, but to basically wait wait her out smoke her out like see if she comes and like i don't know i just have a therapist but like like let's say she just never contacts me again well there you go she did it there's nothing to say that would be aggravating infuriating but yet preferable and then I wonder if Jacqueline would come after me. I bet she would. I don't know. Like, what are you doing? What's going on? How can you do this to her? Uh, I could remind... Uh, it's so much a complex. There's the fact that Jacqueline... Um, I guess she gaslights me. Like, you know, if I'd say the, the, the sky is blue, she'd be like, mm, actually... It's black, you know, like, um, that kind of thing is how she's with me. It's frustrating. And the whole, she's on the gravy train with my sister big time. Her kids, her kids receive a lot from my sister. So if she came, if she called me or whatever, I would be in the wrong. I would be in the wrong no matter what. So, and then, I know that's fucked up, but then that gets to me. Am I in the wrong? Oh, dear. Thank you for being an ear. P Paul's heard it all for 15 years. He can't take it anymore, but he wants to be an ear. And, like, I went through this already. It's like, you can't be an ear if you see you don't want to be an ear. If you see you can't stand being an ear, but you want to be an ear, like, you're not going to be my ear. Um, yeah, just every day that goes by, something new, like, like, wow, like, I don't know. And the story I wrote, of course, is heavily, is about her. I don't know how great a story it is. I mean, I banged it out pretty fast, and, um, I kind of like it, but I'm not the best judge. Um... Uh, we didn't fire Rochelle today. I could tell Paul wants to keep her. Can we afford her? We can't. It's two hundred dollars a month. That seems like a lot. I mean, I think perhaps someone to clean our toilet. I don't know. Oh God, I'm shaky, shaky cam, Blair Witch. Um. Can't wait to Pat Right. I have a Pat Right song I should be making right now. Right now. I don't know if it'll be punk though. I'm not sure how. I don't know. I don't know. I have a song that I'm ready to do. And we'll see. I mean, Pat Right can be anything Pat Right wants. And also, Pat Right's a man. I keep referring to him as him, but it's me. But I'm not gonna go and drag. You know, I'm just going to be me. I figured, I picture myself being very plain. And uh, Paul wants to, like, dress up in, like, eagles and, like, Mr. like I'm super American. And I, I, I mean, he can if he wants, but I just want to be plain. But I'm a guy. I'm Pat Riot. I don't know what I am. I see myself as a man. I got to go. Bye. <laughs>